The sponsor of the video is PCBWay. Now, they're one of the top PCB manufacturers out there, and you can quickly have your projects ready made for you within 24 hours with their 24 hour service. They also do have assembly and flashing services, and it's the company I always use whenever I create a product and or project. So go ahead and check the links down below. In today's video, we're taking a look at a brand new video transmitter from LDARC. Now, this is a pretty budget-oriented company here, and they release pretty decent products. Now, I haven't used many of their products, but other people have, and um, yeah, if you're one of those people, let us know down in the comment section. So, they've released this video transmitter called the KKT30V600. Now, this is a maximum 600 milliwatt output power on paper. Make sure you take note of that. We don't have the proper equipment in order to test the real output power of these. However, before purchasing this, there's also something you need to take into consideration. If you're running 6S, you're not going to be able to use this guy unless you have some sort of a 9 volt, 10 volt, 12 volt regulator, because the maximum input that I'd highly recommend uh, giving it is a 5S. Because the input voltage on this is 7 to 24 volts. And basically 6S with a voltage spike can fry this or just make really bad problems. So I'd highly recommend you only set this up on 4S builds if you're giving the video transmitter raw battery voltage. And we'll explain how to set this up in a bit here. Now, some of the, well, the only thing they provide you with is a connector. And they don't even give you the MMCX, or at least the one I received, I didn't get an MMCX to some sort of a SMA or even a pigtail or anything. So that's something you need to take into consideration here. Now, the output power here is from 25, 100, 200, 400, and 600 milliwatts. So keep that in mind. So now let's cover some more of the specs here. So we said 7 to 24 volt input, and I highly recommend not giving it more than 4S raw battery voltage to power this guy. It does have a 5 volt regulator that's rated up to 1 amp, which is really nice, especially if you're going to be using this on some sort of a FPV wing. Now the mounting size is 30 by 30, so keep that in mind. And for protocol, it's using the IRC tramp protocol, which will allow you to control the output power and also channel through your on-screen display if you set that up. And again, I'll be showing you in this video. Now if we take a closer look here, we do have a button to change the channel and output power, but we only have one single button to do both functions. So you're gonna have to hold it for six seconds to change the output power, press it for two seconds in order to change just the band, which is A, B, E, R, F. And for channel, you just press it once. So that's how you change it if you wanted to use the button instead of the tramp protocol here. Now, if we take a closer look at the board here, what we see is we do have a microphone on board. So if you like microphones, we do have a microphone here. And it is using, again, an MMCX port for connection. And we have our 5 volt regulator right here. And we have a shielded video transmitter, which is really nice to see. We're not seeing that much. We're not seeing many that come shielded nowadays for some reason. But shielding is really great. That protects your overall video signal or just the onboard components from electronic magnetic interference thus giving you unwanted noise in your video feed so this is a nice little addition however the sticker up top i wish or at first glance i thought it was actually uh, a heat sink but it's it's not it's just a, a really thick sticker for some reason it could be a heat sink but it feels plasticky so um i don't know it didn't it doesn't seem metal in any sort of way now let's go ahead and cover the connection setup here so there's two ways to actually connect this to your quadcopter we could either do it by the wire that's provided and also we could solder directly to the bottom. I really like that. I really like it when they give you the option to choose whether you want to solder or you want to use a connector. I always prefer soldering, but a connector is always good, especially if you want to do a quick hot swap or something if something happened. So once you plug in the connector, how would we go about setting this up here? So the way this works is we have VCC and power. Now, uh, five volt out, this is very important. Don't think this takes a five volt input. This does not, so ignore the five volt out. Where you wanna give it power from is the VCC and ground, which are the top two right here, which is these two wires. Now the VCC will go to any VBAT pad on your flight controller or the positive side of where your battery is being connected to your quadcopter. So that's where you'd want to solder this or possibly a nine volt regulator or a 12 volt regulator. So that's where this red one would go, but make sure wherever you're soldering the red wire is above seven volts and below 24 volts. Now the ground's gonna go any ground pad on your flight controller and or ESC, and that way you would apply power to this guy. Now also take something into consideration, never power on your video transmitter without an antenna or you'll fry itself and or lose a lot of distance. So just keep that in mind. 
Now, next we have this white wire, which is basically RX. Now, this will be used in order for you to access the IRC tramp protocol to change the channel and also output power. And the place where this would be connected is it would be connected to any TX pad on your flight controller. However, there's a slight catch. Now, if you're using the RX2 pad, for example, for your receiver, and you plug this into the TX2, it won't work. You need to find an available uh, RX pad or a UR pad. So like a TX3 and make sure the RX3 is not being used. And then that way you'll be able to take full advantage of this. So next here, this is also a really nice touch, especially if you're going to be using some sort of FPV wing without a flight controller. You can plug this directly into your camera and you should be good to go. But if you're using this for a quadcopter, that won't work because you won't have any of the on-screen display. So what you'd wanna actually do, and actually all you need from here is basically just the yellow wire here. You could actually cut those two, you don't need them, uh, which is the five volt out in ground, you, you don't need them. This yellow wire is just gonna go straight to your V out on your flight controller or VO, video output, or VTX. So there'll be a specific pad there where you'd put this yellow wire and that way you're good to go. So it's very simple, all you need is four wires here on a flight controller, VCC ground, which is the battery voltage, and the RX, the tramp protocol, if you wanted to use that, and also the yellow wire, which is gonna be on your V out or VO or VTX, whatever it might be on your flight controller. And that's really it, there's nothing else about this. Now, if anybody's used it, please let us know down in the comment section because your input is very valuable and everything's linked down below. Go ahead and check those out, those great sport channel, and I'll see you in the next one, guys. Peace out.